And to this conversation now, it's been two weeks since floods destroyed large parts of the Western Cape. Not only did floodwaters damage homes, roads and other infrastructure, farmland, including the province's world-renowned vineyards, also took a severe knock. This has caused a severe negative impact on harvests and affected both wine exports and tourism as well. Nikki Wallace from Paul Wallace Wines, as well as Michael Fridjon, South African wine industry commentator, joins us now to unpack this issue and to talk about the devastation. Good evening to you, Michael. Thank you very much for joining us here on Newsnight. Thank you very much for having me here. My yeah. absolute pleasure and a welcome to you, Nikki, as well. Thank you so much for joining us. So I thought it was very important to unpack um, the amount of devastation and the amount of damage uh, that we've experienced specifically uh, when it comes to the South African wine industry. Michael, you showed me at an event we met up uh, at last week just how devastating um, these images have been. Um, let's talk about how bad it, it actually is on the ground. I mean, we are so far removed here in Gauteng, we don't see the damages in front of us, but just talk us through um, what you've seen there and, and how bad the situation actually is. Well, there are some regions that are really badly hit, as Nikki's about to point out when it comes sure. to Elgin, the Robertson Bonnyvale area where the Breda River runs through the sort of middle of vineyards and the floodwaters were so extensive that, for example, there was a, a dead and very large fish found in the vineyards a kilometre from the normal river course. I mean, that's very extensive. The levels of silt and topsoil washed down mm -hmm. from the, um, the mountains down into the Franchuk Valley is extraordinary. And with that, a loss of orchards, uh, it's obviously very important for the economy of the mm -hmm. Western Cape, mm -hmm. a loss of vineyards and a potential loss of the 2024 crop when the, um, the extent of the damage is fully known in terms of the damage to the budding vines mm -hmm. and the damage to the vineyards following the disease that inevitably follows sure. uh, weather of this kind. Yeah, we'll, we'll unpack the devastation a little bit more later. But Nikki, I want to, to come to you because you were directly impacted here. Talk to us about the damage that you experienced to your specific vineyard and how bad it was for you. Well, we are just a, a small operation. I mean, we only make 7,000 cases of wine and we've got 12 hectares of vineyard. So, um, for us, the amount of water that fell, it was a quarter of our, no, 20% of our annual rainfall in 36 hours onto ready saturated ground. And the dams, despite us um, being a, um, warned about the, the level nine storm coming in, we had we'd taken precautions, we dropped the levels, um, but overnight our dams rose by two meters um, and they simply couldn't cope with that amount of water coming in. And our larger dam overflowed into a smaller dam at our entrance. And that was just getting water from every direction. Mm -hmm. And it was rather heartbreaking for us because we started to lose the dam wall. And um, it's amazing that the power and the force of water, it just um, is merciless <laughs> and it just happens so quickly. And uh, our son was in the dam, making sure the overflows were like unblocked. Uh, we were putting tires and sandbags, but nothing was going to stop water having its way. Mm -hmm. And we ended up calling in a neighbor's um, excavator to actually cut open our dam wall in an area that was um, maybe less sensitive. Um, and so we had to destroy part of our own dam wall to protect the the majority of the wall and basically save the dam. So two weeks later down the line, we still um, are unable to repair it as yet. Still no access to uh, the farm. Um, so people coming to visit us have to dodge through our proteas and jump over a flower bed to get to us. Um, <laughs> and the, the cost of uh, repairing that dam wall for us is going to be significant as a small brand, but um, yeah. I hate to think what some of the larger properties um, mm. have actually experienced. I mean, I feel a, a little bit of a fake coming on the news channel it is devastating for us, but for many other wine and uh, fruit producing areas, it's even worse. Yeah, it's been far that worse. That soil that's been washed away is just irreplaceable. Mm -hmm. um, I know of a farm in Bot River that's lost six hectares. It was of orchard, but 
you, you can't get that back. I mean, that's yeah. a huge percentage of your farm gone. <laughs> mm. Nikki, I want to I wanna talk about the, the magnitude and the volume of water because you did mention that you've never seen something like this before. As a wine farm owner, how do you prepare uh, for instances like this? Were you even uh, in any way, shape or form expecting this uh, at this sort of magnitude? Probably not. But how do you safeguard against instances like this? Um, we were warned, but I mean, nobody has seen a level nine storm and this amount of rain um, within some people say 100 years, some people say 200 years, but certainly within living memory of most people saying they've never witnessed that extent of rain. So, you know, any large dam is actually surveyed and signed off. Um, there are safety procedures in place, there's slipways, there's overflows. Um, but despite dropping the dam significantly um, the three days before the rain arrived, it just wasn't enough. The ground was saturated. And every little drop that came in just <laughs> ran off into a dam. It didn't penetrate the ground. The ground was at its maximum capacity. Yeah. Um, so I don't think there's anything anyone could have done differently to have and, and changed Michael, the outcome. Let, let's, talk, let's talk then about you know, the knock on effects. You mentioned earlier um, concerns around the 2024 harvest. How, what sort of impact does this have on the South African wine industry? Because we know uh, billions uh, worth of wine, South African wines are, are exported. So how does it uh, affect exports? How does it affect tourism? How does it uh, uh, affect uh, these smaller and larger wine farms as well? What are those knock on effects that we don't see? So tourism is a very important one, and I'm going to start with that, because if you don't have roads, and the Himalanada Valley has really lost its access roads, it's lost all of the bridges over the Ornus River, yeah. the knock-on effect for the community there is devastating. There was mm -hmm. a bridge that was opened at the beginning of this year that facilitated transport so school kids could get to the Pebble School. That bridge has been washed away. So for tourism, it poses a real problem, and one of the things that all of the regions have said is tourists must come and visit. They will make sure that the roads or that there are sufficient roads and access points. But mm. the one thing they can't afford after the lockdowns of COVID is not to have the tourists come and visit. Sure. In terms of the vineyards themselves, well, it's going to be a region by region issue. Some people say, well, the rain came at the, the right time. You know, we, we needed a bit of rain. A the bit. Reality <laughs> A bit of rain. <laughs> but they don't need, as they had in Elgin, 11 dams broken. Wow. And for anybody who was downstream, a complete wipeout. For those people who've been able to tidy and clean their vineyards without too much damage to the shoots, the next question will be disease pressure. Because if you can't get in to spray, because you can't get in tractors, because you can't get in human beings with the sprays, mm. then, of course, you stand a serious risk of crop loss, total mm. crop loss. And what about job losses, Michael? Is that an issue as well? It's inevitable. You know, as much as people will try to make things work, if there's no work, there's a lot of seasonal labor that sure. finally comes in when the orchards have fruit, when the vineyards are ready for harvest. Mm -hmm. So I think permanent positions are obviously going to survive. But for the seasonal laborers, for whom this is a crucial source of revenue, yeah. it's a devastating, devastating flood. Mm. It's devastating indeed. Nikki, let's talk about future harvests uh, for you and, and perhaps, you know, the farms in, in your surrounding areas. How are things looking for 2024? As Michael says, it's, it's too early to tell. You know, Elgin is a, a very cool climate and so physiologically our vines are behind warmer areas um, they only at a you know have just started budding um, it's going to depend on whether we can control that disease mm -hmm. um, the the humidity the incidence of moisture the snails are like we've never seen before um, yeah too early to say but um, I think it's going to be a difficult um, season to manage yeah, too early but you to know, say. we're resilient. We will make yeah. a plan. I mean, As South some Africans people we are. have got drones <laughs> going in. Um, yeah. 
but for us, we're on a steep farm. Our vines were okay, but the access is difficult, and it's very difficult. Little things like how does a tractor turn on an eroded road? Sure, That's sure. So, so Michael, how then do we as South Africans assist? Is there any way that we can help? Um, what would you suggest? So there are, first of all, a number of, of charities that are available and people can contribute. The Pebbles Project um, does a huge amount for the school kids. Isabella in uh, Franchuk feeds 1,500 school children a day. And the Cape Wine Auction Trust ensures that where kids and education is involved, mm. there certainly will be assistance. On a much wider level, it's an appeal to South Africans to support the wine industry to make sure that they go out and buy the wine, but more importantly, that we don't think that it's a no-go tourism zone mm. come December. I think that just the support of South Africans being there and being there for the wine industry will make an enormous difference. Got you. Well, thank you very much uh, both to you, Michael, and to you, Nikki, as well. I think it's very important to shine the spotlight on, on what happened in those areas and just to talk about that devastation so that we can feel and understand the magnitude of that. So I thank you for your time and your insights as well to the both of you. Thank you very much. My absolute pleasure. Well, that was Michael Fridjon. He's a South African wine industry commentator, as well as Nikki Wallace from Paul Wallace Wines, just talking to us about the devastation uh, in the winelands here in South Africa after we saw those floods uh, taking place. And just talking to us about uh, the real-life situation on the ground.